So um, there were a couple of good questions during uh, during the break. So I, at some point if I used the conical symbol here. In the uh, when I wrote down, remember that we had this way of well defining the model pi. Uh, and uh, writing, I mean, I wrote down the definition component-wise with betas, and there was the term uh, psi uh, delta zero beta, and that was conica. And, uh, and the algebra notation for conica is the one, because multiplication with this conica really is like multiplica multiplication with one in, the, uh, in this uh, formal power series algebra. So therefore, on the... Uh, uh, on the compound level of description, this term into psi times one. And uh, and another question here, which uh, I think should be that I should have say this again. Remember that we motivated uh, introducing this uh, operation gamma by shifting coefficient, shifting the nonlinearity. So by shifting the nonlinearity. And uh, uh, and it had to do with shifting, you know, shifting, shifting the nonlinearity allows you to add a constant to your solution. But uh, but now this, uh, I mean, the, the other important part from the first lecture was that the connection between pi, this thing which I can well define, and u, is broken. That's the formal connection. So uh, so the safe thing is pi. And u, if you want, is not safe. And uh, so therefore, uh, it's nice. That's kind of the, the, uh, the nice observation here. If I take kind of this heuristics to define a gamma, which acts on t, and therefore, which acts on pi, and I look at the transformed pi, pi tilde, then it indeed is, again, a solution of the same problem. And I've shifted the value by tau zero in the sense that I've shifted the uh, uh, the expectation by tau zero. So uh, uh, so that's the um, um, that's the uh, um, that's the remark which I wanted to make. So here, of course, there are a couple of uh, um, details. I mean, things of uh, uh, computations of uh, half a page to uh, 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 you know I mean, a quarter of a page to see that this is correct. Uh, uh, then this here is uh, fairly immediate, but you can also right away derive it from this definition if you don't like this ODE argument. Uh, this triangular structure uh, can best be seen from this representation. And using property, using in a certain sense the fact that this V zero is nil potent uh, with respect to the graded norms, those are little uh, crucial little observations. But uh, uh, perhaps it's not uh, uh, reasonable to do that on the blackboard, also in view of uh, in view of the time. And uh, just believe me that this is kind of you know I mean you have to organize your thoughts, but uh, it's uh, uh, it's elementary. Okay, so uh, so this uh, so I, I showed this because uh, uh, because in some sense that's uh, already the nutshell of the uh, uh, um, the structure group uh, uh, will uh, will need. Um, and now, if there are no further questions, let me. Uh, yeah, on, yes. So the the transformation is it going to? have an effect that the space average changes by the shift. Yes, so uh, so that, that in fact, this last line comes in, uh, uh, is, uh, can be easily seen. Because the new solution is not gamma pi, because gamma pi plus tau zero. And so if I uh, take the so it's not really the expectation, but the spatial average. If I take the spatial average here, uh, since gamma just acts on the abstract model space, it doesn't do anything with the active variable. Uh, this goes here, and that's something which doesn't is you know not a fun, I mean, does not depend on the active variable, so that's the identity. And then pi was defined so that this is equal to zero, yeah. right? And that's, this is 
But if you, you really need it inside the pine, you cannot put it on the sea somehow, in the constant, right? Because it, you need it in the formula of it somewhere. Right, so since the yeah. equation is nonlinear, um, so no, the, sorry, what, uh, what is your... No, I mean like you cannot kind of, on the right hand side of your equation, I mean, on the left hand side, you could put the tau zero into the, the tilde because the derivatives cancel. Yes, correct. So, but on the right hand side, it still appears with the product for high derivatives or so. Right, so. Yes, so on the right hand, on the right hand side, it matters because here you, you, I mean, you have something where you don't see, I mean, which mat, which where constants matter. But but somehow that you move out of space and with zero, this is not going to be a problem. In from a capital pi with space average zero, and you make a shift and you have space average tau, that's not a problem. No, that's exactly, and I, I come to that, uh, and that was already a little bit of a question before. I mean, uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to construct the entire solution manifold. So in order to get a good, I mean, in a certain sense, the, um, uh, uh, the model of Hira is there to locally give you complete description of your solution manifold. And since you have a PDE, uh, of course, even locally, I mean, if you have an ODE, uh, the only degree of freedom you have locally is one dimensional, right? Because you can change your initial value. But now you have a PDE, and therefore, locally, even you have a kind of an infinite dimensional uh, degree, degrees of freedom. And those you want to capture, those you have to capture to, uh, to do a good thing. So you're exactly these. Uh, the structure group is exactly there to provide this flexibility. So it's good that you can change something, but that's not enough. We want to do even more. And that, yeah, that's a question. No questions? Okay. So right. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes. In the case of the regularity structures. I mean, with different base points, I am using different Taylor polynomials, right? In base point x not, I am using x minus x not x minus x squared. In the base point uh, x1, I am using the one expanded around x1. But in your case, you are using the same uh, Yeah, we're not yet there. Okay. So, so, okay. so this is exactly, so I mean, remember that I haven't even written down pi x. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and what I defined is not enough to get pi x. Okay. And that's exactly the next step. Okay. Because I mean, but that's a related question. You need more flexibility. Okay. In a certain sense, you have to at least enrich your space uh, through the polynomials. More interesting, you know, yeah, we'll have the time for that tomorrow. Is to estimate, I mean, to, to uh, kind of derive the analytical estimates on the, uh, on the model. But the problem is with, with the model we constructed so far, it's not rich enough, and uh, because it does not, uh, it does not capture uh, the full local behavior you may have uh, for your nonlinear solutions. So that would be a model construction for model. So as I said, uh, uh, what we did in step two is not rich enough. Or is uh, some people like to work, uh, there's a word impoverished. It's impoverished. Uh, so, um, um, and the, the idea is a little bit uh, uh, um, as, um, as A uh, is uh, equal to 1, um, we have, uh, we can write all the solutions. Uh, Uh, 
we can write them by uh, uh, by taking the periodic solution, which uh, okay, so I need a constant for that perhaps. And then we take, uh, we add to it uh, any uh, uh, homogeneous solution. And let's uh, think of this one as being a polynomial. And then we take the sum of these. We, uh, uh, we, we already have a fairly rich or kind of in a certain sense a complete uh, 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 local behavior. And now we want to deform these, uh, <laughs> these solutions into solutions of the uh, so just linear manifold into a nonlinear manifold uh, of solutions as uh, A is no longer uh, trivial. That's the uh, that's the idea, and um, uh, and it's uh, kind of convenient to uh, uh, give up uh, that we're really, and this is also a little bit in the, in the spirit of what Martin Heyer does, because he never cares for the exact equation, but he only cares for the equation up to polynomials, up to polynomial errors. So uh, 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 it's, uh, it's natural to generalize this uh, uh, to uh, uh, the equation where uh, you're looking uh, well now with uh, any of the nonlinearity uh, plus uh, kind of a general polynomial P is equal to itself. And uh, so now, whereas before we were thinking we were thinking of solutions as being functionals of A. Now we should rather think of uh, our solutions as being functionals of A and the initial, perhaps I should give this a different name, uh, the initial polynomial Q. And uh, so uh, in a certain sense, that means we want to introduce more dummy variables. So uh, Next to uh, the ZKs, which remember we're playing the roles of uh, the partial derivatives of the nonlinearity in the origin, uh, we want uh, uh, variables which correspond. Uh, if you want to uh, the uh, spatial and temporal derivatives of uh, uh, this polynomial, let's say, in the origin, and uh, <coughs> let's call these variables Wn, and n is now uh, a two-dimensional multi-index. First component stands for time. And second component stands for uh, no. First component stands for space. Second component stands for time. And um, but we already have seen that we took care of shifts of kind of lifting the solution up and down. So we shouldn't be uh, needing the zero end here. Uh, so this is the motivation. Now comes the uh, comes the definition of uh, what I would call uh, the stationary model. So the full stationary model. Stationary or periodic model. I'm using here a little bit the language of probability uh, theory and. Uh, so uh, for those who know Heyer's regularity structures, remember that he has a pi, and he has pi indexed by x. And I'm using the same notation. He gets the pi indexed by x by applying an element of the structure group to pi. 
And so like, uh, like he does in, uh, in his lecture notes, I'm first defining pi and then defining pi x as a basis of pi. So in the pi model, I call it stationary model because in some sense that uh, will have the best periodicity of stationarity properties, uh, uh, whereas the pi x model, the anchored model, has kind of, kind of flexibility in the local behavior. <coughs> and now, um, in order to do that properly, um, so uh, T, now that's going to be uh, the final uh, abstract uh, model space, our formal power series in the K variables, the dummy K variables, and the dummy W variables. So this is again, of course, uh, an algebra. And uh, pi is, uh, um, is something, uh, is, um, uh, is a formal power series So before it was a form of power series in ZK with coefficients which are periodic functions. And now uh, the coefficients are, okay, I need more space. The coefficients are, uh, sorry, polynomials. In uh, Y, so some variable in time space with coefficients in periodic functions. So, uh, so the change, the change is now we have uh, an entire set of more dummy variables. And uh, the coefficients are not just periodic functions, but there were polynomials times, well, not really times periodic functions, but polynomials with coefficients being periodic functions. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's now rich enough to construct uh, the stationary model in an unambiguous way, and then also to get the, uh, the model in the sense of pilot of the anchor model. That's the usual. Uh, uh, that's the usual. Wait, wait, wait a no, no, no. That's the usual. Ah, right. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's stupid. Uh, <coughs> no, no, no. You don't need to go. No, no, no. No, no. series. So that's. Uh, So, uh, uh, so dn is uh, d, uh, so d, d, y, 1, and 1, d, d, y, 2, and 2. Okay, so, uh, um, so that's uh, in p is uh, a formal power series in ZK. <coughs> with uh, coefficients, like just uh, polynomials. And, uh, and it's defined in the following way. Uh, 
exactly uh, the same equation, um, almost the same equation, d2 minus d1 squared, pi is equal to k is larger than 0, zk, pi k, d1 squared k, plus p is equal plus psi times 1, and the average of phi is equal to, uh, uh, and this one, that would be y n. Uh, and where these derivatives are uh, the sum of the derivative with respect to this new polynomial variable plus the uh, derivative with respect to the periodic variable. So that uh, if you're evaluating a coefficient of pi at the diagonal and you want to take the total derivative of this expression with respect to uh, the i-th component of the variable, you get this uh, uh, di pi beta y y. Okay, so uh, what is to be said here? Um, the equation is exactly the same as what I wrote uh, down in case of the impoverished model. <laughs> uh, the difference is now that as opposed to the impoverished model, uh, I impose uh, non-trivial spatial averages. So <laughs> this is now the average in the periodic variable only. And uh, here I give, in a certain sense, my, I give myself the full freedom of generating any type of polynomial in the periodic, in, in the polynomial variable y, depending on the value of these dummy arguments w. So that's the uh, uh, that's the um, uh, that's the definition of uh, the uh, full stationary model. Yes. Of pi, the coefficients are polynomials in y, and the coefficients of the polynomials are yeah. periodic functions. Okay, so, so let me write down. So, uh, so let's look at a component uh, and a coefficient of the, so beta, beta, the mark index beta is now something which uh, has components uh, for uh, k and components for n. So this space of multi indices now, of course, became larger because I added dummy variables. So the Cartesian product of, uh, and um, so now that means this here is a function of two variables. One variable I call y, and the other one is kind of the periodic variable. And I impose that I can write it as <coughs> Uh, a polynomial with coefficients that we call them n, uh, notation n here, uh, which are periodic. That's that's what I mean. So it has. It, it, I'm, I'm doubling. I'm, I, I now have two kind of uh, time-space variables a y variable and one which I don't give a name momentarily. Both are kind of space-time variables. In this variable, in the first in the y variable, it's a polynomial. Now it's real polynomial, not just a formal power series. It's really finite. So a sum for some n. And, uh, and the coefficients are periodic functions. 
Yeah, so that's what I, so now, I mean, right? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, kind of uh, a, large, uh, a large object. And now the claim is that this is, uh, so the first claim is uh, that uh, it's well defined essentially by the same type of argument as before. And uh, so I will not probably not say much about it. Um, and so it's unique. I mean, so this couple of pi and p is unique. And, uh, and then what is more important is that uh, it gives rise to kind of now the full structure group. And with help of the full structure group, we can build the model in the sense of pi about this pi x. Okay, so uh, um, so again, why is this uh, why is this solvable? Well, enough. I mean, as we did before, we should write it component-wise. And uh, so, of course, component-wise, it. Uh, assumes exactly the same form of uh, what we had before. So we have the sum over k, and we have the sum over um, uh, multi-indices. Uh, we have uh, pi beta 1 times pi beta k times d1 pi eta <coughs> plus 1 uh, plus uh, psi delta eta 0. That's what it means component-wise. Uh, so again, we can do uh, uh, we can do an iterative uh, uh, iterative uh, inductive definition by the order of, uh, of beta. And so the only thing we need to convince ourselves is that uh, uh, of the following uh, PDE principle, which is elementary uh, linear PDE, that uh, uh, for all pair, uh, I'm going to, to write it, uh, uh, FP, which is a polynomial in Y with coefficients being, for the first part, periodic functions, and for the second part, just scalar. Uh, there exists a unique pair uh, U, U and this P in the same space. Uh, such that uh, d2 minus d1 squared u plus p is equal to f, and the uh, average in the, per in the periodic variable of u is equal to q. <coughs> and, uh, and this again, you see uh, that you can solve it by writing it down uh, by doing by comparing the coefficients by doing it uh, monomial by monomial. Okay, so uh, so that means this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, model is now unambiguously uh, uh, defined. And of course now uh, the question is what does it uh, uh, what does it do for you and how do I get the uh, the model in the sense of high uh, from this and what's the structure group so that's what uh, that's what comes next so but perhaps when do I have to start? Uh, uh, at noon at fifteen are there are there questions so far before I embark on the next Perhaps the most important step for today, how, uh, how uh, starting from this huge object here, which however is completely well defined and just uh, is a bunch of linear problems, solving linear problems, uh, uh, how, how from uh, uh, 
uh, from this, uh, what I call stationary model, uh, how one builds now the model in the sense of high up, and uh, including the change of variables of so pi x. Uh, so now, now it's really, now it's really about uh, the next step. Uh, it's really about uh, building uh, uh, pi x, uh, building uh, uh, g, building gamma y x, <laughs> and uh, kind of introducing homogeneities, which we haven't done. So that will be the next step. Are there questions before? So again, I mean, I, in a certain sense, I, I see this, you should see this as an exercise in, uh, in uh, kind of uh, uh, regularity structures in a situation which is uh, kind of interesting because it's a semi-linear, a quasi-linear equation, uh, but uh, uh, where in, in a certain sense you can see this at, uh, you can see this at work. So, uh, Okay, so uh, what should I keep? Uh, I should uh, probably keep uh, the definition down here. And uh, and first make a couple of remarks uh, which have to do with the uh, which have to do with this uh, this model and uh, um, the stationary model, and it's convenient or you let to distinguish uh, um, uh, multi indices that are purely polynomial. So uh, that means uh, uh, I want uh, b dot k to be equal to zero for all k. So no contribution from, uh, let's say, the stationary part, I mean, uh, the original part. But I want the, uh, uh, I want to, I want to be, non I want it to be non-trivial. So I call these, uh, these b dots uh, purely polynomial. And for purely polynomial b does, uh, I claim that uh, we can write down the solution. Uh, so here, I should add, I should translate this condition, uh, sorry, where this condition on the average in the component-wise language, so in the component-wise language, uh, the average uh, is equal to, uh, uh, y n if beta is the multi index e n and zero else, and uh, so that's the component wise translation of this new condition. And so, what we get from here is that if beta is purely polynomial, then all this thing drops out because a purely polynomial. B dot cannot contain one of the k's because of this condition. And this also drops out because B dot is not equal to zero. So this entire right hand side is equal to zero. So the only thing that matters is this condition. So in this condition, we have pi B dot uh, is equal to uh, uh, right to the power of n. If <coughs> Beta is E n and zero else. That's one observation. And if uh, beta is not purely polynomial, then it occasionally vanishes. And uh, what you have is that uh, uh, if uh, Uh, 
the length of the polynomial part is large uh, compared to uh, here if it's larger if it's larger than uh, the scale norm of the uh, original part, then pi vanishes. Okay, so that's, uh, um, <clears throat> that's those are two observations which are easy to check by. The sec first one is trivial, the second one is easy to check by induction. And uh, now uh, that allows us to, uh, uh, now let's, uh, let's start with defining the, the real model in the sense of higher, the anchored model. And in order to do so, we now introduce the homogeneity. So we fix, for the moment, uh, some positive level alpha. Eventually, we will need it to be larger than 1. And to make things simple, we will need to be larger than 2. Um, then, um, uh, then the set of homogeneities uh, is given. By the homogeneity of the subindex, which I will define in the second, multi-index, which I will define in the second, uh, provided the model is uh, populated, and the homogeneity of the index is given by um, alpha times the scale norm, which we already had on the original part of the multi-index plus. Uh, NP minus alpha uh, on the new part of the model plus alpha. And, um, and from these two uh, properties, we know what A looks like. We have that A can be written as uh, alpha times N plus M0, but it's always non negative. Uh, that's, uh, that's a consequence of the fact that uh, despite uh, this negative contribution here, uh, this negative contribution never overshadows the positive contribution because of this uh, population property of, uh, of the model. So that will be the set of uh, homogeneity. So it's kind of a uh, lattice between uh, uh, integers and uh, 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 alpha times an integer. Eventually, you should think of alpha as being irrational. And now, uh, with this, we can define the, uh, uh, the model in the sense of higher. So uh, this is something which we can Uh, fix the base point x. Uh, to fix? Uh, no. And we define uh, the couple of pi x uh, px, and that's 
supposed to be uh, a formal power series in set A and WN. Now the same object, the same, I mean same as before, because we need the same uh, abstract model space. So with uh, coefficients equal to polynomials in Y, <coughs> equal to periodic functions. For the first component and the second component is simpler, that's just scalars. Uh, such that we have always the same equation. But this time uh, we have to be more careful about the averaging because we want this model to be vanishing. So um, um, for um, that are not equal to purely polynomial, we distinguish the parabolic order of derivative being less then the homogeneity, then we want the derivative of the beta component in the base point xx to vanish. And in the other case, when the derivative in a certain sense is higher than the homogeneity, we want to retain the old condition on the expected uh, on the uh, spatial average, and for uh, in the so-called in, in the trivial case when v is purely polynomial, we can write it down explicitly. P x uh, is equal to uh, uh, y minus x to the power of n if v is equal to e n and zero if v and in that case. So, uh, so what did change? Not much. So the, the difference between uh, uh, the difference between uh, uh, the stationary model and the uh, anchored model just uh, is in uh, kind of in this condition of uh, imposing that you vanish to uh, the order of uh, up to the homogeneity in the base point, and also instead of having the polynomial y to the n, you have an anchored polynomial in x. So that's uh, that's the difference between uh, between the two definitions. Uh, 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 <coughs> if you uh, if you compare it here, or if you compare the uh, um, uh, this, uh, this condition. Okay. And now the claim is that um, this uh, pi x can be obtained by a simple transformation of the pi, which is purely algebraic, as we as we've seen in the in the uh, previous chapter. Let me write this down, and then uh, you can uh, ask me about whether you want to see some things in more detail. Using higher representation here, fx pi. 
uh, where uh, a for suitable um, all ends, which uh, now there is kind of a bunch of them which give rise to fx in the same uh, in the same spirit as before. Um, in the sense that uh, we define this um, exponential map. Um, Sense that we define this exponential map uh, uh, in the sense that with uh, in the following, in the same similar, similar way as before, with gamma being uh, the unique uh, algebra morphism uh, that satisfies how this has to go. Same thing as before on the uh, uh, linear monomials which come from the old part of the abstract model space, it acts exactly as before. And now we have to prescribe how it acts on the new linear monomials. So these and there it acts very simply by shift by power. So, uh, so this gives rise to uh, this like before, we give rise to the uh, structure group. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the uh, that's the plan for now. I ask you uh, for yes, questions. The PX yes. is defined. Not, sorry, the PX. I mean, you, you broke down now. Then high X is given by formula. Oh yeah. Then PX. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, so let me uh, let me recap uh, let me recap a little bit uh, uh, what has happened. So uh, um, so in the before the break, uh, I wrote down the model, a structure group, an abstract uh, model space, but in a certain sense that was impoverished. That was not rich enough because it couldn't kind of capture the full solution manifold in a local way. It was missing, uh, <coughs> missing, I mean, tremendous degrees of freedom. It was missing most degrees of freedom. So now we make an attempt to uh, kind of introduce these missing degrees of freedom by, in a certain sense, taking into account polynomial behavior. But of course, uh, the solutions are not polynomials, right? I mean, it's highly nonlinear. Uh, nonlinear equation. So, uh, uh, so in a certain sense, we 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 uh, we feed in polynomials, but then through this process of uh, solving either equation, you get uh, you get objects which are uh, you know, quite different from polynomials. But uh, all the objects can be nicely described as uh, polynomials with coefficients which are periodic functions. At least in this class of uh, in this class of objects, we have uniqueness results. And uniqueness results will be crucial for, uh, for instance, uh, this formula here. And, uh, and the, nice, uh, the nice thing is that uh, that uh, this uh, kind of operation of uh, anchoring 
the model by imposing a certain number of vanishing derivatives in the origin. Remember, everything is smooth, so I can write it down like this. Uh, is on the level of the abstract model space a purely algebraic operation as before. We just take the stationary model and we multiply it with an element of our structure group to get the anchored model. That's exactly the same way as Haira kind of moves uh, from the uh, uh, from uh, from the model which he or kind of preform of the model which he calls boldface pi to uh, what he really calls the model px. Now I, we call this here stationary and that anchored model, but that's just semantics. And uh, and so in a certain sense the what I have to convince you of, I mean, more or less, is that this formula is true, uh, that uh, this here indeed uh, kind of uh, defines a, a triangular um, uh, a morphism and that uh, uh, the group property holds as before. So, uh, uh, so that's, uh, that, that still remains to be done in order to see that this object here is invertible. Because that's, in the end, what, uh, what happens in Haira's regularity structures, that you can pass from one base point to the other base point. <coughs> now, we have one object in the background, but in order to do that, we need this to be invertible. So we need this, uh, uh, this thing to have triangular structure, and, uh, and why it has triangular structure is, uh, is perhaps not, uh, not completely obvious. OK, so uh, questions? Yeah, I still don't understand the lower part of the void. So your f axis is constructed by this sequence of tau x. So, so, right? But then, then there is what, yeah, I don't know what f x now is. Right. So remember that in the before the break, uh, I introduced uh, uh, I introduced this operation, which was a little bit like an exponential map, mm -hmm. where you took an element of uh, the uh, model space and you associate to it uh, an algebra homomorphism. Mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the end, it's even an automorphism. And, uh, uh, and that was, uh, it was, uh, we kind of defined it uh, by this. We had different ways of representing it. Right? And now, now, now uh, in order to specify such uh, an algebra homomorphism, uh, it will not just depend on a single element of the uh, structure group, but it will depend on, um, uh, so each of these things is in T, and it's indexed by N, and N is always, if I don't specify it, is always this uh, index, uh, uh, as you corrected me, which is in, uh, in this space. So now, now this exponential map takes uh, a much larger input. So instead of taking a single tau, tau zero as an input, it takes uh, uh, a bunch of tau indexed by n as an input. But it's defined here. Okay, but this is the gamma, and that there is an f. So right. So so this is so 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 remember that the structure group is something which is defined. Or I don't know what I should say. Remember, but the the structure group is something which is defined on the abstract model <laughs> space. So I have to tell you how I define the structure group. So here I'm telling you I define the structure group by saying it's all these, uh, it's all these um, uh, linear transformations, in fact, uh, uh, um, algebra uh, endomorphisms, which arise from tall ends by this way. And now I'm saying uh, there exist suitable tall ends which are now indexed by x, so that the corresponding uh, uh, transformation <coughs> x has this property. And I haven't told you yet what these things are. So those we have to construct. Or I have to, I mean, it's, it's not hard in the process uh, to see how, how, how they are. Yeah. More questions? Even phi x is a formal power series, right? Everything. So, so when, uh, when I say formal power series, it doesn't mean that it's not well defined. Formal power series is just uh, 
a way of organizing uh, numbers. So when I say formal policy, so that's very important. When I say formal policy, it doesn't mean that all this is formal. On the contrary, I mean what I'm saying here is is rigorous. Uh, but formal power series means uh, it's, uh, it's, it's numbers which are indexed by multi-indices, and I arrange, I think of them as being a power series. So it's just a good way of thinking because then you know how to multiply them. But when you take the base point x series 2 and you apply it by x, you're still getting a uh, value in the uh, abstract structure, right? You're not getting back a, a distribution yet. Oh no! I mean, the, I mean the smooth case where everything is a function. So, uh, so um, where did I write what uh, what uh, pi is supposed to be? So pi for fixed x is. I mean, there are these two ways of seeing it. You can either see it uh, as uh, um, essentially a function with values in the abstract model space. But you can also kind of exchange this order, and that's exactly what I did here. So I, I consider it as a formal power series in these dummy arguments, which essentially means I consider it as a bunch of objects which are indexed by beta. And then this object here itself is a polynomial in Y with coefficients which are periodic functions. Yeah, so it's a bit, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a bit uh, contorted, uh, or let's say, I mean, it's, it's uh, um, like, uh, I mean, you, you need this, uh, I mean, you need this extremely augmented description uh, 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 where you introduce kind of uh, uh, these many uh, formal and uh, one more actual variable to have the flexibility to construct your uh, your solution space in the full generality, also on the local level. More questions? Yeah? Could you repeat again what the role of structure groups? <coughs> the role of structure group. So why do we need it? OK, so so the structure group is, so in, in, uh, um, in, uh, in, in higher, uh, so I mean, on the level of what I explained, uh, the structure group is needed in order to uh, uh, pass from uh, uh, the model anchored in one base point to the model anchored in another base point. And it takes, uh, it takes this model and just uh, kind of transforms, it's now an element of the structure group, takes this model, I mean, and transforms it purely algebraically uh, to get the model here. That's what it's needed for. And then you, I mean, that, that's the first place where it's needed for it. It describes how to, uh, how to transform uh, your, um, your local descriptions. I mean, on the, uh, the, the simplest example is uh, 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 when, you, when, uh, when the model is purely polynomial. And you have kind of, uh, on the one hand, you have all the polynomials which vanish in x. And on the other hand, you have all the polynomials which vanish in y. And you can transform one, uh, one into the other. And that's what the that's the polynomial uh, case, and here uh, the case is more uh, uh, is more general. So that's uh, that's where the structure group. Uh, uh, so uh, so this gamma is an element of the structure group, and the structure group is uh, is is a linear uh, is a linear transformation of um, uh, or actually in a, an invertible a linear transformation in the general case of the abstract model space. Thank you. Yeah. More questions? So what do you want to, uh, what, I mean, how much time do I have still? 15 minutes? Uh, so uh, um, what do you want to see? So. Uh, uh, what um, what are the what are the things which uh, uh, which uh, can which are perhaps interesting? So interesting is perhaps how to uh, uh, construct these. I mean, how to get to this transformation and how to construct the uh, the tall x ends. Uh, I would say that's the most interesting part, but perhaps you want to see something uh, 
something before uh, uh, the PD, this PDE statement which I erased, or um, eventually, uh, uh, eventually there is also uh, the statement why uh, why this is triangular. Um, and therefore for invertible, and therefore for the group, what the group structure is. Um, any wishes? It's a four point five. Sorry? Four point five. Okay. Okay, so right. So again, uh, you uh, because of uh, because of the uniqueness property, we can arrive at the uh, at the anchored model, which I defined here also in a different way. So let me um, uh, let me erase this here and say how it can be. Uh, How it can be constructed. I mean, another way of how it can be defined or constructed, which is uh, which is iterative. And uh, so, in the uh, in the purely polynomial case, we have this explicit formula, so that's not interesting. Um, uh, we also know exactly what it is in case of beta equal to zero. So uh, uh, for beta equal to zero, uh, all we have to do is uh, we take the uh, uh, the not anchored model and um, um, <clears throat> and we add to it a polynomial so that it vanishes at the right order. less than one, this would just mean uh, subtracting a constant uh, or adding a negative constant so that this vanishes at the origin. If alpha is between one and two, you have to take uh, 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 also to, uh, kind of a spatially affine term. And if alpha is large, you have to do, uh, you have to do more here. And uh, so, uh, uh, oops. so this is how you pass from uh, use these colors. That's the obvious way of what, of what you do uh, when you go uh, from uh, uh, the stationary to the anchored model uh, on the level of beta equal to zero, and um, and you don't uh, you only fuss with the equation up to a polynomial term, which anyway you're willing to uh, you're willing to. Take. And so sorry? what is the statement on the right hand side? The end. My zero x x. Oh, is equal to zero. Okay. And um, so this here, this is what we want to get at.
So uh, now for uh, beta not equal to zero and not a uh, polynomial, uh, we first uh, look at um, um, the, uh, the unique solution of uh, um, two minus d one squared p x tilde plus p x tilde is equal to uh, now we look at the component beta. This uh, unfolded nonlinear term, beta plus beta one plus beta k plus one is equal to beta. I uh, x uh, beta one pi x beta k and one square x beta k plus one. Uh, but now we, uh, as we did by, as we did uh, uh, for the uh, stationary uh, model, uh, we imposed that the uh, um, so we solve this, and then we correct uh, this here by uh, uh, by uh, uh, again. Uh, an, kind of a polynomial, so that it vanishes to the right body. So, uh, uh, so uh, that tau n x beta and p less than the homogeneity of beta p such that uh, i x beta, which is this here, plus uh, such that this vanishes uh, to the right order at the base point. Obviously, that determines this polynomial in a unique way. There is a, uh, if, I, I, if I look at a polynomial of degree strictly less than this, there exists a unique polynomial so that all derivatives strictly less than that vanish. And I can decide to write this polynomial with the uh, base point uh, being the origin. So I can write it like this. And uh, now, uh, Obviously, uh, changing pi tilde by a polynomial part, because I have the freedom of this polynomial, doesn't change uh, the equation. So I have uh, the same equation uh, with uh, pi x beta, provided I also change this polynomial. Same. Right hand side. But what did I gain? I have now information about the uh, about the expectation of uh, uh, beta x uh, of this object because the, the expectation or the, ex the spatial average of this vanishes. So the spatial average is just given by this one here. So, uh, but uh, x beta. Is equal to uh, tau n x beta y n. Okay, so uh, what I see this way is that uh, um, I have constructed here in every step, I have constructed these tau n's only up to a certain, uh, uh, up to a certain kind of, with a certain constraint. Uh, such that uh, uh, I know that the, uh, uh, that the spatial average of my anchor model is given by this. And now I can appeal to uh, uniqueness to get the formula. So what should I raise now?
Contribution which comes from the uh, uh, purely polynomial part, which is explicit, which is this. And there is the contribution which we just uh, saw, which is this one here. So that's uh, that's another way of writing. Uh, that's another way of writing the uh, uh, writing the problem. Which the anchored model solves. Uh, of course, I put this here, and I forgot to do X. And now we can compare it to uh, now we can comp can compare both problems, and we can say that uh, uh, if you uh, if you consider Pi, no, fx pi plus tau 0x, that this object satisfies exactly the same problem. Provided we define the fx in such a way that it, uh, like uh, um, I specified before, tau plus k, k tau zero, tau that k plus tau, tau plus k, and uh, f x w k is equal to. Uh, that Wn is equal to Wn plus uh, Nx. Okay. So, uh, so the claim is that, provided I put these, uh, I put these tau xn's here and here. So here the n not equal to zero. Here the n equal to zero part. And I define uh, my transformation <coughs> as an algebra homomorphism by these two requirements, by these requirements, which defines it uniquely. Then this expression solves the same equation. I mean, uh, so I should also look at the pressure. I mean, uh, the, this part here. And uh, why is that the case? So for the equation, that's exactly the same calculation or remark we did in the uh, we did before the break so there is nothing to show there uh, it's just about this part here and but that's uh, also uh, nice to see because so uh, what happens if we uh, uh, take this thing and take the expectation so very much as before uh, this averaging or expectation of, this, of the periodic variable only acts here. Now I can plug in uh, the definition of the stationary model. I can pull the uh, 
this transformation that acts only on the WN. <coughs> so this I can write as n not equal to zero uh, f x WN y n plus tau zero. And uh, now I can use this new part of the definition uh, on this part here to replace this by Wn plus tau nx. And then you see that these two expressions are the same. And uh, therefore, by, by, uniqueness, uh, by uniqueness of the problem, and therefore it's important to have this kind of uh, uniqueness statement to set it up in such a way that you have uniqueness, you get the formula. So essentially, you don't have to work for, for getting these formulas that fall into your, essentially fall into your lab by, by definition of the objects and by the PD uniqueness statements which, uh, uh, which you have at hand, which a little bit replaces uh, when Haira works with the kernel, right? Because then he writes down the solution operator and, uh, and therefore he has kind of the uniqueness built in. But if you want to work with the PDE, of course, you have to set up things in such a way that you get uniqueness in order to get these, uh, 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 these formulas. Time's almost over. So, uh, so perhaps that was, the, uh, that was the crucial step. So, uh, uh, there is a completely well-defined uh, stationary model, there's a completely well-defined anchored model, and you can pass from one to the other in a completely algebraic way with, uh, with this transformation of the abstract model space. And now there's a little bit of work to show that uh, uh, this has triangular structure with respect to the homogeneities which we define, and that it kind of retains the group structure which uh, the original which we had in the uh, before the break and so perhaps uh, perhaps uh, um, I'm going to uh, say a little bit about this tomorrow and then uh, what I definitely want to do is uh, get the analytic estimates right I mean part of uh, uh, part of the definition of the model was uh, uh, where these analytical statements, which I wrote down in the, on, on the very first blackboard, uh, which are part of uh, uh, the definition of the uh, uh, model in, uh, in Haiva, so kind of this vanishing order, and that uh, uh, that uh, that I, I, I want to do uh, uh, want to do tomorrow. So uh, while here, in a certain sense, this was just uh, essentially uh, a little bit of algebra. Tomorrow there will be a bit of analysis in the sense that there will be elements of. Uh, of Schauder theory uh, coming up for that part. But, uh, um, uh, right, so let me stop here. Okay, so, uh, so let me, uh, the, um, so, right, I mean, the, the goal is to get, uh, um, to get this uh, pi x model, the anchored model, I mean, the model where, uh, where depending on the homogeneity of beta, uh, your pi x has a prescribed order of vanishing at the base point. And, uh, uh, and you, want to, uh, you want to obtain that model in such a way that you can transform from, from one base point to another base point. So in some sense, you want to be able to say, I have all the information in a single base point, like you have for polynomials. And uh, in that, in order to achieve this, you're defining a model in the background, which we call here stationary model using the same notation as I have a big pi 
from which you obtain the model with the base point. And that you, uh, that's done in a completely algebraic way. That's the, I think, the, 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 the nice observation by an element of the structure group, which Hira calls Fx. I, you could also call it gamma x, but I, I'm, I'm trying to use Heidel's notation as much as possible. He calls that fx. Gamma x would be as natural notation, whereas changing from one base point to the other base point, he calls gamma yx or xy. Uh, yeah, so, so that's a little bit the question of notation. And, and, you know, so he calls it fx, <coughs> but he also uses f. Does that yeah. answer the question? In, in, in paragraph two, you only had a little shift, but this was not enough to go from base one base point to the other. Right. So, so, so what I had in paragraph two would have been enough to make uh, the function zero at the base point. But you just want to make, you know, I mean, by shift because you were able to shift functions by constants. Mm -hmm. But you want to, in a certain sense, also tilt them, and you want to tilt them to a higher order, right? If beta has large homogeneity. You want to, you know, make them to vanish, make them vanish to higher order. So you want to, uh, in a certain sense, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, influence their order of vanishing. And that's where this, in order to have this type of freedom in a completely algebraic way, you have to tremendously blow up your uh, your ansatz space by both introducing additional dummy variables. Wn and by introducing uh, an additional actual variable because you no longer work in the framework of just periodic functions in space, but you need kind of uh, periodic functions, I mean, polynomial, tensor, periodic functions. Uh, yeah. Are there electronomes? Uh, not yet. 